Hot Wheels, Narrow Roads, two racing titles start the show, and they're both for the Nintendo 64. Extreme G comes from the world of Wipeout. High-speed futuristic vehicles compete against one another with plenty of weapons to help their chances of reaching the finishing line first. And as well as missiles and lasers, each bike can pick up mines or these handy electrical blasters that give a nasty shock to anyone trying to pass. Unlike Wipeout, the bikes are simple to handle and surprisingly hard to crash. Extreme G is all about finding the fastest point on the track and also choosing the best route. Take one turn and the journey may be long and simple, while another may be short and twisty. In multiplayer mode, you can easily be confused by what the other vehicles are doing, but the more players, the more fun you'll have, and the gameplay hardly slows down at all. It's smooth, addictive, and surprisingly strategic with all the options you might want. So far, Extreme G has only really got one competitor. And that happens to be F1 Pole Position 64, also for the N64. Closer to the arcade than simulation, this looks and feels far more like Formula 197 on the PlayStation than Grand Prix 2 on the PC. It's quicker than both, and as a result, the first problem is learning how to control your car with the console's tiny joystick. Once you've mastered that, you've got rain, fog, and some fairly smart computer-controlled drivers to beat. This is just as well, because Pole Position 64 doesn't have a multiplayer option. If you're good enough for a long race or bad enough to ruin your tyres, a well-timed pit stop is essential. You're in and out in no time, and in a way, that's part of the problem. Everything's very efficient, but it isn't a lot of fun. That magical ingredient which makes a game addictive just isn't here. Extreme G shows that you don't need Mario to have fun on wheels, and, well-coded as it is, the N64's first F1 title could have done with better team management.